for something a bit different? I'm going to explain how I review mice, and I'll use the Pulsefire Core as the example. To start though, I never intended on making reviewing mice a career. I was just someone with a lot of gaming experience who wanted to aim well. I had looked at the data about mice and the marketing, and like many people out there, it got a bit overwhelming. To the point I would just say, can you please just tell me if it's going to be good to play with or not. That's essentially what my reviews are about, the player experience. Which is why I put such a big focus on shape and weight. With optical sensors becoming so good these days, those are the two most important factors. And with the light mice, the cable is also becoming really important. A good example of this is the click latency. Obviously, you don't want buttons with high latency, but most of us are playing online games with different pings all the time. Our brains do adjust to the lag. That means click latency isn't a deal breaker, unless you're going pro on LAN. Even with a fairly big difference of about 10 milliseconds like this one, I would still use the Pulsefire Core over the G903 because I prefer the shape and weight. As much as I love the G903, it's not really meant for first person shooters. And I've always said that these tests are not super accurate. They don't have to be. There has been some confusion as to how I do them though, so let me point out how to read this screen. On the left you have the human click test. I'll leave the link in the description. People are right, this is subject to human error, but I do more than the 5 out of 5 shown. I repeat this test until I'm satisfied I've got the lowest legitimate score with the mouse, and I switch between the two mice. You see, on top is the mouse being reviewed, and the G903 is there for control. So going from G903 to core, on the same day, in the same minutes, I can get a decent read on which one has lower latency, and then I do another 5 with each, just to get the final result, and that's what I show to make the review look tidy and keep it informative. That test is good because it's like real use in a game, and to back it up, I then hit the buttons together in the bomb test. That's what you're seeing on the right. You see the core being the left key, and the right being the G903. The right key wins by about the same margin as I got in the human click test. And then I switch so it's the left on the G903 and the right on the core. And I check if the results are the same. This test can be altered by where you tap the buttons. So again, it's not an exact test. But I do my best to try to keep it as fair as possible. Both have their issues on their own. But together, I think they give us a good idea on whether or not there's latency. I'm sure you could get much more accurate testing. But again, your brain adapts. I do think companies should work toward the lowest latency possible. But no mouse is perfect. And I'm still going to choose the core over the G903 for FPS. Because as I said, my brain adapts to the lag, but the G903 physically limits my ability to aim, through the weight and shape, to the point I'll still play better with the core. I prefer symmetrical shapes these days due to the balance, but ergonomic are still really good too, like the G403, Rival 600 and 310, and DC series. This style of shape is my favourite though, like the Surge before it, the core has this very safe design, other than maybe the flare at the front, but it just has enough curvature along the sides for comfort and grip, like this slight curve toward the top is really important for when picking a mouse up. If you have the sides going the other way, like on the first pulse fire, it is harder to grip and hold. They have some comfort curves in the buttons too, although in my opinion, they could be deeper. Hump more toward the back, so claw grippers should be able to rest their palm a bit and smaller hands can feel comfortable palm gripping. It's rounded too, like on the Surge. It doesn't have a flattened middle like the Zowie FK and S mice. I prefer the Zowie shape personally. This is just a really good shape though. I could go into more detail, but I've been over this kind of design enough already. I am glad they're using it. As I said, the ends do flare out a bit, but they're fairly smooth. I don't think they will be a problem, but something to be aware of. This is where I look at dimensions, because it seems a mouse about 60% of your hair measurements works best. With the length relating more to grip comfort, this one is 11.8cm, suited to around 19.6cm hands. And the width of the fingers, so grip width, relates more to your aiming ability. This one is about 5.7cm, which could suit 9.6cm wide hands. Here are some highlights with the Cougar 230M, because I've now tested well over 100 mice, and confirmed I feel more comfortable aiming with a thinner midsection. The 230M is too long at about 13cm, but I love using it. And I get some amazing highlights, including this rare double mid-air, followed by a mid-air, because the grip width is only about 5.5cm, which is pretty much ideal for me. That's why I think it matters most when aiming. You can think of it like holding a pen. It's easier to write accurately when holding something like a pen, rather than a paintbrush. So that's why I've been recommending smaller mice, because they've really improved my aim, and a lot of people have said the same. Just quickly, here it is next to some other mice, so you get a better idea of the size. It's between small and medium. So 19.6 by 9.6 centimeters is recommended for the core, but that's in fingertip or claw grip. I think palm grip is disadvantaged because you need to use a larger mouse to get comfortable. That's why I switched from palm to fingertip, and I've never aimed better. I'd encourage people to give it a try, but if you are using palm, under 18 centimeters would be okay on this. 
Generally, the middle grain section of the chart is what I recommend. And then you can add or subtract a centimeter or so, and it should still be okay. But again, these are rough guides. They're not meant to be exact. You still have to figure out what's right for you and your grip. Everyone is different. Moving on to materials. Instead of the rubberized coatings on the surge, the core is all plastic. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It could be more durable. And these grooves in the plastic are very fine, and they feel comfortable enough. Now I'll try something new, I'm going to do this live. Some people think the button sound test is kind of pointless, but you can actually tell a fair bit just by the sound. Have a listen to this. So you can tell this button is loose. That's no good, I don't know how many copies that's going to be on. Hopefully not too many. Hopefully this is just a once off. But you never know. Now listen to the clicks. Actually pretty good. Nice and snappy. Not too loud. I like them. Pretty good steps on the wheel. Not too strong. So they're still good for browsing. But it does have noticeable steps. Now the side buttons, these are actually some of my favourites on any mouse. Not too much trouble, just a good click on them. Very good. And DPI buttons. Not the greatest, still quite good. But they're out of the way, no accidental clicks. Now I'm just going to tap the mouse and then shake it. Already can hear the slight rattle, the buzz. And just moving the cable out of the way, holding it while I shake it. Yeah, you can hear the scroll wheel, I think. Oh, it sounds like maybe a sensor area. Yeah, it's a slight rattle just on that lens area and the wheel. So some good points and bad points. The quality could use some improvements. But I'm not sure if it's just this copy or not. These cables HyperX are now using are really good too. You see how easily it bends. Plus it's braided and smooth. I do the pushback test to show their flexibility a little. But this is affected by the weight too. A heavier mouse is harder to push back. So make sure you listen to my description as well. But these cables are some of the best. Not quite the best, but still some of the best. Speaking of weight, this is about 94 grams. Weight is a big factor for a mouse, but not the biggest. Some people do prefer heavier mice, and it seems it's to steady their hands. If you have shaky hands, maybe look at a heavier mouse. Or make sure you eat enough before playing, because an empty stomach can cause you to shake. Recently, I tried to show how much accuracy can improve in the final mouse video. F58 against the Phantom, about 10 grams difference. Some people misunderstood this, thinking I was aiming better with both mice compared to others. But no, I found I could aim 3-10% to better using the F58 instead of the Phantom. So it's just the F58 against the Phantom. And that was tested in over 20 matches in Quake against bots, and then even more matches against humans. I was just checking the accuracy at the end of each match. It was a rough estimate, but I could definitely aim better with the lighter mouse. That said, I can aim much better with the Zowie S2, because size is a more important factor. If we get an F58 the size of an S2, my guess would be my aim would be even better with that. Hopefully we get to find out someday. So yes, weight matters. A lighter mouse seems better, but shape is more important. To a degree anyway. I wouldn't use a Zowie S2 if it weighed 200 grams. But you still have to find what's right for you. It's just the majority of people that watch my videos prefer lighter mice as well. Moving on to the sensor. I put the sensor through my usual testing, so you can check the description for that. It's the 3327, and I can't find a problem with it. I would say there are technical differences, but I try to base my reviews on the experience in game. Watch this mid-air flick rocket. I had no doubt I could do that shot with the sensor. You can say it's a fluke, but I do these shots fairly often. As seen in these rail clips that I showed recently. The secret is having a sensitivity based on a comfortable 180 degree flick. I'll leave a link in the description if you want an explanation to it. The only thing I don't really comment on these days is latency, because the feel of the mice is affected by the feet, the shape, weight, size, and cable. Too many factors. But for now, I guess it seems fine to me. I just want to point something out though, as a lot of people ask. The lower the DPI, the jerkier the tracking. Here's a look at 400 DPI on the 3327. And now 3360. Both look pretty bad. Now raise it to 800. 
It looks a bit smoother, but still jerky. Sixteen hundred shows some jerkiness, but it's a lot better. Notice the steps in the jerkiness are getting smaller and smaller, and thirty-two hundred is even smoother. But from my testing, I generally can't tell the difference between two thousand and thirty-two hundred. Sixteen hundred seems to be a happy medium for a lot of sensors, but thirty-two hundred is recommended on the thirty-three sixty and Hero sensors. Either way, so far I'm happy with the thirty-three twenty-seven. But check the description for updates if I have any. The mouse feet are quite large, and they glide smoothly. I generally don't focus on feed much, unless they're causing an issue, because it would get too complicated and I'd need to talk about multiple pads. So for now, I'm happy with these. The software is fairly basic, you can change the lighting with some options, including color cycle or just turn it off. The DPI goes in steps of 100, from 200 to 6200, and you can set 5 of those for each profile. Doesn't appear to have onboard memory, and I had to run the software to get my settings, which is a shame, especially because every time I reboot, it reverts to default settings. Not default profile, default settings. So as far as I can tell, I have to load the software and select the default profile that I changed every time, and I have to select my DPI again if I switch profile. I hope they work on that because that's just wasting time. It should be automatic. You can alter what the buttons do, which is actually good because you have the two DPI buttons on top. I don't change DPI in game, so I'd rather use them for media. And there's macro functionality, but I never use those, so I'll leave it to someone else. In conclusion to the HyperX Pulse Fire Core, it's meant to be more of a budget option, although still not cheap, but in some ways I prefer it over the Surge. It's more my size. As always, get what's right for you, but there isn't too much difference between them. If you can't afford the Surge and want a HyperX mouse, the Core is a good choice. Really enjoyed using it, despite its flaws, but there's no such thing as a perfect mouse anyway. Is it going to be a top recommendation? Not right up the top, but it will be above the surge for now. To me, this is just showing that HyperX continues to improve and show a lot of promise. Looking forward to their future mice. As for my reviews, I hope this video has helped explain them. Yes, we can go super technical on mice, and the videos can go 20, 30, or even 40 minutes long, but I really don't think they need to. At the end of it all, my reviews are mainly about my experience. That's why I've said I've been playing Quake for over 20 years so often. I wanted people to understand what these reviews were really about. I made my first mouse review because I couldn't find any reviews by gamers with as much experience. I didn't really care about the details. I just wanted to know if I could play at a high level with it. In the Pulse Fire Core, yes, I can play well, but not my best. It needs to be lighter and smaller than me. And of course, just overall quality improvements too. Also, I continue playing Quake for consistency. I understand the game so well, that if there's a problem, I'll usually know whether it's a mouse, me, or the game. It's also a game that relies heavily on the three main aim styles. Tracking, leading, and placement or rapid fire, projectile, or sniper. So no matter what game you play, I'm basically testing how well a mouse is going to play in all of them. That's the beauty of Quake. It's like the father of competitive first-person shooters, the original. And also, once you get into Quake, it's hard to enjoy anything else. It's just amazing. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Full disclosure, this mouse was sent to me for review, but it was honest and I was not instructed on what to say. If you want to help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. And as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.